Hello everybody, as promised, I'm doing this again. <laughs> so I just got back from Atlanta. I was doing a fun secret project that many of you will see. Um, I don't know when, probably sometime next year. Um, very exciting stuff. And you know what's even more exciting? Not telling you any of the details. A um, few things before I get into the Q and a, uh, the International Trombone Festival is totally going on this year. Uh, there's an in-person aspect to it, but you know, we don't know how many people we can have in person. So uh, it's also virtual, which is super exciting. It's, we've never had a live stream festival before. And so if you couldn't make it out to the festival, tough luck. Uh, this year you could totally uh, attend virtually, see all of these awesome concerts and everything. There's a youth workshop aspect, which is totally virtual. You will be uh, working with me and some of my uh, very, very fine colleagues. I'll be doing a virtual trombone choir. Um, there's actually two. If you register before, I believe it is June... 20th, I guess a little before that because you have to record your video, but uh, anybody in before June 20th, you can be in the virtual choir that will be actually live streamed during the conference. Um, and then for anybody uh, who signs up for the youth workshop, even day of, uh, you'll have a chance to send in another video and be uh, a part of the mass choir that I will release on my YouTube channel uh, later. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, if you're 18 or younger, I believe it is, uh, you can be in the youth workshop. Everybody else, come on to the virtual ITF, or uh, I'm not sure what the protocols are for coming in person to Georgia, but it is um, July 14th to the 17th. Um, all that information on trombonefestival.net. I'll do a full lineup video shortly, but uh, until then, go check it out. Don't miss it. It'll be really fun. And again, youth workshop folks, uh, middle school, high school trombonists, uh, come on, hang out with me. All right. So let's get into the Q&A. This is for Patreon folks, patreon.com slash classical trombone if you're interested in all this stuff. And thanks again, everybody, for being understanding. Uh, I usually don't get this busy. Um, and hopefully I'll never get this busy again because this is not fun. I miss playing trombone and writing arrangements and everything. Um, but I think next week we can make one happen. So we have uh, from Colding says, any chance you would have a performance in Vermont or Baltimore when the pandemic is over? Uh, people ask me these questions all the time. Like, hey, when you coming here, when you coming there? Um, I'm I obviously took some time off from traveling. I was going all over the place uh, before the pandemic. Uh, and like I was supposed to do another, I guess it was like, six or seven weeks on the road uh, and it all got canceled. And here's the thing about that. I <laughs> was so relieved when everything got canceled. And that's that kind of made me reassess a lot of stuff uh, in my life. Um, most people, most musicians dream about traveling and performing uh, in front of people and doing the solo concert thing. And I realized I was doing it because everyone else in my circles like kind of dreamed of that and I could do that like I had people asking me to come out to their schools and do master classes or come out to their you know community band and do a a solo spot with them and all of those things and orchestras and all of these or or just solo looping concerts and things I was doing that mostly because I knew it was a desirable thing for my musician friends. Not necessarily because I wanted to do it. What I really, really love doing is making YouTube videos. Um, I love the production of them. I love the creative, uh, you know, aspect of it, of just coming up with an idea and then making it happen through just working on it and working on it. Um, that's a particular set of skills that does not translate to stage. Now, I think I did a pretty good job for my live performances. Anybody who has ever been to one of them, feel free to comment below <laughs> and tell me. I can take it if it was good or what. I think my stage presence is probably my strongest uh, asset because uh, I spend so much time talking to a camera. I can talk to myself on stage and, and it feels similar. Uh, and I know how to make that feel personable, you know? And that's not a skill that most people have. Certainly not a skill that <laughs> most musicians have, instrumental musicians even worse, you know? 
it's not something that you get to practice very much. I get to practice it all the time. So I would step on stage and just feel like loose and good. And the audience would then be like, you know, uh, de-escalated from this like, oh, you know, this is a concert. Everything's uh, prim and proper. It was just like fun. And I, I liked that I could create that environment for an audience and for myself to have a good time. All that said, I don't know that I loved it uh, as much. I, I Not as much as I was doing it. I mean, I was on the road 280 days one year, just like constant. Um, and trying to do the YouTube videos at the same time. And so what I noticed happening is the YouTube videos were not uh, as good as I knew I could make them because I didn't have time. And in turn, like the live performances were not necessarily as good because I was having to spend all my free time making the YouTube videos rather than practicing for the live shows. You know, I was kind of doing these two full-time jobs. So all this to say, I, I will get back to touring. Uh, I might take a little more time off because I've been so busy editing videos this year. I haven't really had time to just focus on YouTube as these videos uh, will show you, you know. Uh, it's a pandemic and I'm not performing live and yet I still don't have the time that I would love to have to really uh, pour into the YouTube videos. So uh, I think I'm going to get back to the YouTube thing full time for a little bit before I get back on the road. Um, and then I might just pick a little bit here and there and say like, I'll do a couple concerts a year, make them big and go all out. Uh, but otherwise, I might. I might see what it's like to just kind of back away from that that side of my life a little bit. So I wouldn't hold my breath, but I do have family in Baltimore and I've never been to Vermont. So those are two really, really good places to pick if you want to see me in one of those because those, are, those would be much, much higher on my list than places I may have played, places I may have played that didn't go so well. I'm not, you know, like even if it had nothing to do with anything uh, that I did or the place or the venue, like you, you kind of have this sour taste in your mouth. Like when I played in New York, uh, not a ton of people came out and it was really expensive to play there. And I just don't have any, I live here, you know, and I don't really have that much of a desire to do that again. Um, even if it was just like a fluke, Eh, you know, I would much rather go to a place that totally turned out for me, like Atlanta or L.A. or Phoenix. Tons of people turned out for that show. You know, um, those are the places I would I would be itching to go back. Um, or a place like Baltimore or uh, some place in Vermont where I haven't been. I haven't done a concert there. All right. Caleb says, what's your favorite cover that you've done and why? Probably the, the International Trombone Festival collaborations. They're just so, so much. I get to work with the best musicians in the world. Who gets to do that? Who gets to just sit in a room and record these folks, get to know them a little bit, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one recording session with each of these people with crazy experiences. And uh, I learn from every single one of them. I get to see their process because they're sight reading my stuff. So you know, the top ones for those would be Bohemian Rhapsody, um, Don't Stop Believing, and the Daft Punk, Harder, Better, Faster. Those are like the top top three, that the most recent ones that I've done of that. Um, if we're leaving those big collaborations out, because those are like a whole different thing. Um, solo stuff. I mean, I love singing. Uh, it's it's something different that is is that I like doing, and it's, it's different than what I'm used to. Uh, so those are kind of fun. Um, and the funk stuff, the Wolfpack covers are, are a blast. Uh, but honestly, sometimes you just hit one and it sits really, really nice on the instrument. And it's not necessarily about the song or even the arrangement. It's just like, oh, that came together and it sounds great. Uh, I remember one, it was a Maroon 5. What was the song? Let me look it up. Sugar by Maroon 5. I don't know why. It all just like came together at the end and... You know, I played this like very simple improvised solo going into the outro. And I listen back, I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I would have wanted to do in that. And that may sound like a weird thing. Like, well, then what do I usually do? Some, not that, you know? And it's just like, it all just like works and it didn't take too much time or effort to make it work. Pretty cool. Um, so I, I don't know why that one pops out. It just does. I remember really, really like enjoying listening to it after the fact, which doesn't, does not always happen. 
Uh, yeah. And then somebody said, would you be opposed to doing another Patreon? Somebody, Daniel, would you be opposed to doing uh, another Patreon collaboration project? I know it's a lot of work, but it would be so much fun. Yeah, I love the Patreon club. So just like the International Trombone Festival Youth Workshop Mass Choir thing that we'll be doing, we'll be doing again two of them, one for the festival itself and then one after the festival for my YouTube channel. I do these Patreon collaborations, right? And uh, they're really fun. Yeah, they are a lot of work. All I've been doing all year is putting together virtual uh, ensembles, though, for different schools, universities, uh, professional groups. So... I've gotten really good at it, and I also have a, an entire team of people who help me edit this stuff now, so I actually have the infrastructure in place to do these much, much easier. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm absolutely going to do that. So I'll announce it on here for sure. Uh, basically, once things wind down with uh, the, the editing projects, the freelance work that I've been up to this whole time, uh, then I, I'll start winding up things like that. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll announce it on here for sure. And we'll get all y'all Patreon folks uh, playing on on a big collaboration. It'll be fun. The hardest thing about those is, is finding music because it's got to be, you know, cleared to send sheet music to just a million folks, you know, without getting, without paying for it. So, uh, you know, we did Shenandoah, which is totally free public domain music. There's no, you know, rights holders to pay. And then there was another, what was the other one we did? Song for Japan, which again... Was, were cleared to do because um, that sheet music the composer has just uh, given out to everybody so we'd have to pick something that is not super boring you know I'd love to do like a current pop tune or like a John Williams thing I wanted to do I had on my list Indiana Jones but it's just a nightmare to get the rights and do that legally so we'll have to pick something something else but uh, I think we'll find something good so there you go uh, that's plenty for today. Yeah. Um, but I'll be back next week. Again, if you want to ask questions, uh, for a future episode of this, uh, just join over on Patreon and I'll, I'll send out the, the notice to ask. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Patreon folks, for keeping this thing going while I'm super crazy busy. It was a wild week. Uh, I will tell you all about it. I promise I'll make a whole video about it once uh, the thing that I was working on is released. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next week.